Good morning, everyone. It is Friday morning, and we're going to come and read Psalm 21. Let's hear it together. How the King rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. You, you have given him his heart's desire. You have withheld nothing he requested. You welcomed him back with success and prosperity. You placed a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life and you granted his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. Your victory brings him great honour and you have clothed him with splendour and majesty. You have endowed him with eternal blessings. You have given him the joy of your presence. For the king's trust in the Lord, the unfailing love of the Most High will keep him from stumbling. You will capture all his enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. You will throw them into a flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them with his anger. Fire will devour them. He will wipe their children from the face of the earth. They will never have descendants. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed. For they will turn and run when they see your arrows aimed at them. Rise up, O Lord, in all your power. With music we sing, with music and singing we celebrate your mighty acts. Amen. This psalm seems to fall along quite closely from the other psalms that have gone before. Um, you've, you've had in the previous couple of psalms about people turning to God and asking God and rescue me. And then in this psalm it says, How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts for joy because you give him victory. There's that sense of God being with the king and with the people then as a result. It just shows an answering of prayer. If you think of the Psalms as prayers, if you think of the Psalms as um, a priest or, or somebody, the Psalmist praying for a particular reason, a particular cause, um, maybe something the king has done and the king is sorry, and then you see an answer to prayer where they see very much God with the king. And then because he's with the king, he's with the nation. We have to get our heads around sometimes some of the phrasing which is used and, and, the, and, and how it's put in context. Um, to us these days, a king or a queen is simply a figurehead of a nation. Um, they don't really have all that much um, power or authority. But in those days, in the psalmist days, the king's authority is ultimate. The king really does lead the nation uh, and quite often when it talks about the king and the success of the king it actually means everybody and that means the nation that means what's going on in the, in the nation so to see how the psalmist celebrates what god is doing for the king you've got to see how the how the, the psalmist is talking about what god is doing for the country the nation um, and the king trusts in the lord the nation trusts in the lord the king sets the standard um, and, the, and the people follow the standard of the king. That's why the king was so important. And the faith of the king was so important. And in this passage, in this psalm, you have a king who is faithfully following God. Uh, and then seeing the reward of, of following God. There are other things that we, we would find really difficult to understand. Um, about destroying people, wiping their children from the face of the earth with no descendants. That idea, particularly nowadays, is foreign to us. Um, but it's interesting, it talks about in verse 9, you will throw them into a flaming furnace when you appear. There's future judgment there. And again, it ties in with Revelation. So even though this is the psalm in the Old Testament, it has links right the way back and right the way forward in the Bible. Everything is interconnected and interlinked. And that's the amazing thing about Scripture. We sometimes think of this as a 66 different books which all come together. It's not. It's one book, the 66 chapters, and how they all flow into one another. So yeah, the, the, the psalmist wants to, to give thanks to God for answering prayer. So there's a, a lesson for us today. How often do we go back and thank God for answered prayer? 
hopefully we're very good at talking to God. Hopefully we do pray. Hopefully we do have that relationship that we, we talk to God. Um, and in that, you know, as we teach the children, we, we say sorry, we say thank you, we pray for others and we say please, things that we want to ask for. But how good are we at that? Thanks. How good are we going back and saying thank you, Lord, for, for your answered prayer? Not even whenever it's the answer that we want, but also whenever we get the answer that we don't want. Do we thank God for that answered prayer? Think about that as you go about your day today. Think about that as you pray to God, as you talk to God today. And even as we talk to him now in a moment, think about how we say thank you. So let's do that. Let's pray and let's give thanks um, as we come and talk to God. Let's pray together. Father, you are a great and a wonderful and a powerful God. Lord, we simply have to open our eyes and look at what is around us to realise how mighty and powerful you are. Lord, may it humble us as we realise how insignificant we are and yet how much you love us and care for us. Father, thank you for that love and care. Thank you for the love poured out through Jesus, our Saviour. Thank you, Father, that you always listen to us, you always hear us, and thank you that you always answer us. Lord, sorry that we don't always say thank you. Sorry that we don't always want to say thank you, maybe because we don't get the answers that we want. But Lord, thank you that you always answer us. Help us, Father, to keep on talking to you and to keep on looking and listening for your answers. Be with us this day and this weekend, we pray, Father, in Christ's name. Amen. Whatever you're about today, whatever you're getting up to, um, whether you're working, whether you're still furloughed, maybe you're, you're starting to get back to work part time. Uh, if you're off on holidays at the minute, um, and maybe you're, you're planning to go out and about, meet up with family or friends at a social distance, whatever you're doing today, I pray that God would truly bless you and look after you and keep you safe. And the same for the weekend, that you would have a great weekend, um, just as you get a chance to relax if you are back at work. So folks, remember we're not doing this tomorrow. Um, it's Saturday, so we'll be day off. And Sunday we'll be streaming again live at 11 o'clock from Strain. And again, we'll have a few people down with me, somebody to read, somebody to pray, somebody to play some music. So if you're free on Sunday morning, please come along and join us at 11. If you're not, if you're, if you're doing something else, that's fine. You'll pick it up later on in the day as well on Facebook. Um, and then I'll get copied over onto YouTube as well. But take care. God bless. See you soon.